This is a supplementary video to a video that we previously posted demonstrating how to install and configure Video Station onto a Synology NAS. In this video, we're going to take a look at how you add a movie file to the video network share that we created when we installed and configured Video Station onto our NAS. As this will automatically add that film to Video Station's movie library, we will then take a look at playing back a movie from within Video Station via a web browser on our computer. Please note that currently, Video Station and our NAS have not been configured for access via the internet, which means that our instance of Video Station is only accessible to users connected to our home network. For this demonstration, we will use a movie that has been encoded using the MP4 file format. Not only will this file format work within Video Station, you should find that this file format is compatible with most modern video playback devices, for example games consoles, tablets and mobile phones. However, please note that when you add a movie to Video Station's library, you need to ensure that the film does not contain any digital rights management. For example, content that has been purchased via the iTunes Store will not play back through Video Station. The process for adding movie files to Video Station is very straightforward. However, in order to have Video Station correctly identify a movie or TV show, and then automatically assign that piece of content with the correct artwork and metadata, it is recommended that you use the following file name conventions. For a movie, the file name should consist of the movie's title, a space, followed by an open bracket, the date the film was released, close bracket, a full stop, and then the file extension. For a TV show, the file name should consist of the show's title, followed by a full stop, an S, followed by the series number, another full stop, then an E, followed by the episode number. At the end of the file name, we need to place a final full stop, followed by the file extension. From our computer, if we now look into our home network, using an account with access privileges to our video share, we can add a film to Video Station's library by simply dragging and dropping our movie into our video share. Any film stored in our video share will now automatically be added to Video Station's library. If we now open a web browser, and in the address bar type the IP address of our NAS, followed by a forward slash and the word video. When we press enter on the keyboard, Video Station will load. We know that this is the Video Station login screen because of this icon. Let's log into Video Station using the login credentials for one of the users of our home network. As we currently only have a single movie in our Video Station library, the recommendation section for Video Station will only display Sintel, which is the movie that we've just copied, to the video share on our NAS. Let's select our movie. You can see that the film's poster art and its metadata are automatically pulled from the internet into Video Station. The movie status is also displayed. Currently, it's set to unwatched. We then have some basic information about the film, which in this instance was pulled from IMDb, and a summary of the film story. Finally, just below the film's age rating, we also have information on the video and audio formats that this movie uses. Let's play the movie. In order to stream the video, Part of the video has to be pulled from the NAS in order to act as a buffer. This means that the speed of your home network will dictate how long it takes before the movie starts to play. You can see that the movie is being played back from within our browser window.
let's take a look at the controls that can be found at the bottom of the movie. First, we have an option that allows us to either pause or play the film. Next, we have an option that allows us to scrub through the film using the progress bar. To the right of the progress bar is the volume controls, along with settings which will allow us to choose between different audio tracks and enable or disable subtitles. Within settings, we also have an option that will allow us to choose where a movie is played. For example, if we have a television with either a Chromecast or an Apple TV connected to it, we can instruct Video Station to stream that movie to one of those devices. Finally, within settings, we have an option that allows us to repeat the video currently being played. If we want the video to fill the screen of our computer, on the far right hand side of the control panel, we have a fill screen option. Let's return to displaying the video within the window of our browser. After watching the movie, we can return to Video Station by selecting the cross in the top right hand corner of the movie. Let's return to the home page of Video Station. Now to log out of Video Station, we simply need to select the drop down button next to the name of the user that we've logged into Video Station with. From within the drop down menu, if we select Log Out, we are returned to the Video Station login screen.